So today we're going to be talking about Five to Thrive, so your health and wellness journey. My name is Abby Horton, and I have the privilege of serving as one of the wellness class educators for Wellbema. I'm also a registered nurse, a health and wellness coach, a Wellbema ambassador, and the wellness class educator. So we would love for you to know about some of our upcoming program for this semester. We have Wellbama Health Screening starting on March 4th, which is just right around the corner. We also have the Crimson Couch to 5K 10K training program, which starts March 1st. And um, we have some other events coming up with Move Spring, and then the actual event and race will be on April the 3rd. So we would love for you to join in these programming opportunities, and we would love for you to share them with your colleagues. So please let us know if we can be of service to you, but otherwise we'll go ahead and get started. So oftentimes when we think about developing a health and wellness journey, we really have to overcome some obstacles, not only with just the logistics of, you know, practically making space and time for us to get healthy, but also sometimes we have to really overcome some mindset obstacles. And so I want to give y'all a permission slip to really put yourself and your health first. You know, it's okay to say no, it's okay to ask for help, it's okay to make time for yourselves, and you're already taking those first steps by being here today. So we really want to give this time for you to ask questions and have, you know, just a really, you know, well-balanced hour of information of how to really start with the basics. So when we think about health, a lot of times we think of calories in, calories out, move your body, and that's it. But today we really want to talk about holistic health. So mind, body, and spirit, and how those three things work together to really create health and well-being. And so when we think about the body, we oftentimes, like I said, just think about our calorie intake and our exercise, but there's so much more that goes into health. And so we want to really think about how we can nourish our body, how we can support our body, because our bodies are naturally designed to heal themselves when we give them the things that they need. And then thinking about our mind and our spirit, you know, what does our mind need? We usually need more time to focus, more time to have quiet time. We also need for our spirit to really, you know, connect on a, a spiritual level with ourselves. So not just that, you know, you have a spiritual practice or you know, that you're religious because those things can be separate, but really that we're taking care of ourselves on that spiritual level, that soul level. So some affirmations that you can really use and some practical strategies that you can use to kind of take care of your mind, body, and spirit would be to, um, for this example, be, you know, I am disciplined and strong. So for your body, you might wake up in the morning and say that you're disciplined and you're strong and you're ready for the day. And then some things that you could do to support your body would be to be drinking water and staying active and remembering, you know, that progress over perfection is really the goal. And um, essential oils, sometimes people will use those as, you know, a way to develop a really good self-care practice. Um, so there's some, you know, essential oils here that you could use. There's some here listed for the mind and the spirit. So tips, essential oils, and then affirmations. And so I have these here for you just as kind of a inspiration and starting point for where you can start thinking about, you know, how do I practically think about health when it comes to mind, body, and spirit, when we're so often just focused on exercise and calories. So have that here for you. We'll be happy to share this if you'd like, but this is just a starting point for you. So when we think about making changes, I have a lot of information on habit change, and you're welcome to go check that out on some of our previous webinars. They're in the archive on wellness.ua.edu. Um, so we're not going to talk as much about habit change today, but for mindset, it really is about developing the habit of being really appreciative and self-aware and practicing gratitude because our mindset so often determines our success. And so perspective is everything when it comes to health and wellness, and there's always something to be grateful for. And we'll talk more about that. 
So we also have to think about with mindset, controlling what we can control. Oftentimes we get so stressed and so upset about things that really are out of our control. And I'm definitely guilty of that. Um, there have been really stressful periods in this last year for me personally. So, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you today as someone who's living this, not someone who's arrived. And so, um, you know, you really have to kind of coach yourself and think about how do I change my mindset when I'm feeling stressed? And stress is a huge obstacle to health and wellness. So, you know, the goal here isn't really to get rid of your negative thoughts or feelings. And, you know, sometimes we say things are negative when really they're just not helpful, you know. And so that's really not the goal here. The goal is not to be stress free. We talk about stress as if we shouldn't have stress, and that's just not real is realistic for our day and age. And um, we talk about emotions as if we should only be happy. We talk about um, our thoughts as if we should only have happy thoughts. And that's just not where we are in our lives today. And so we really want to focus on how we respond when we do have unhelpful thoughts or you know, emotions that feel more overwhelming and less happy, um, or when we have stressors that we encounter, we really want to just change our response to those. So you are likely not going to wake up tomorrow and think only happy thoughts and be stress-free and, you know, only have happy emotions because that's just not the human experience. Um, it's definitely not my experience. So what we have to do is really think about what is it that we can control and how do we kind of feel those emotions, think those thoughts, and then move forward. And so we really want to focus on worrying about or not worrying about what we can't control. And so the things that we can control usually kind of come down to two things. There's lots of things you could list. And I have some examples in the third di diagram for you. But really, our attitude and our effort, that's really what we can control for the most part. Um, you know, we can control our actions, our behaviors, you know, what we're eating, what we're not eating, who we're following or unfollowing on social media, um, how we speak to ourselves, how we speak to others, you know, we can control those kinds of things. Our personal boundaries that we set, our reactions to things, um, that's hugely important because a lot of times the stress that we have is really in how we react to the stressor, not the actual stressor itself. And so the last diagram here is a Venn diagram. And I love, I love Venn diagrams. I've always been a fan. And this one is particularly fun because it talks about the things that matter versus the things that you can control. And really where we want to focus our attention and our time is on where those two things overlap. So where we can control the things that matter, that's what we want to really focus on. Because there are things in our lives that we can control that really in the grand scheme don't matter. And there are things that matter in our life that are really important to us and we have really no control over those. And if we stay in the spot where we're trying to control things that um, you know, really don't matter, or we're trying to control things that matter that we really don't have any control over. We get a lot of frustration and just um, kind of sink further into that stress that we have. And that's really going to impact our overall health and well being. So I always tell people, regardless of what your goals are, I always tell people to start with the wellness basics. So that's why I have this start here. Uh, pin, you know, it's kind of symbolizing the GPS pin, because if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. You know, that's the old um, saying, and it's very true. You know, if you go to put in your, you know, GPS address, say you're going to take a trip this weekend, and you've never been to this place before, so you need to put in an address um, to, to kind of map your way to, to the location, it always asks you, usually it interrupts you and asks you to put in where you are. And that's so important because there's a lot of paths that will get you to your destination. For the most part, there are at least two or three different ways that you can get to your end goal. Um, but you have to kind of know where you're starting, you know, first, or you're not going to know how you're going to get there. And so that's the really the basis of the wellness basics, because you've got to know where you are. Um, and you've got to know what your goals are your end goals. Those are your address points. So 
if you're not sleeping well, if you're not staying hydrated, if you're not eating a nourishing diet of food, if you're not um, kind of moving your body every day, even if it's not formal exercise, if you're not meditating and resting your brain and your body throughout the day, then the other goals that you have, which usually at the beginning of the year kind of center around weight loss or, um, you know, something, you know, to do with your fitness, those goals are going to be harder for you to achieve if you're not really tuned into these five basics. So we call them the five to thrive. And these work regardless of kind of where you are in your life or in your journey. So um, maybe your goals about health and wellness are more related to like a diagnosis. Maybe you're wanting to get off a of medication or maybe you're wanting to prevent, you know, a, a disease that runs in your family or maybe you're just wanting to take some more time for yourself. If you start with these five basics, that will be the good foundation you need to start making um, bigger you know, goals and bigger progress kind of down the road. So we're gonna go through each of these five things. I'm gonna give you five tips for each of those, and I'm gonna give you five kind of practical tools or products that may be helpful to you that you can kind of um, you know, decide if that resonates with you, if that would be helpful in your journey and um, give you some more information and then we'll open it up for a question and answer at the end. So with sleep, we often talk about getting the right number of hours of sleep. We always hear seven to nine hours is what we need nightly and research tells us that that's true. But I want to really emphasize that not only is the quantity of sleep that you're getting important, but more importantly, I think for me, is the quality of sleep that you're getting. So if you're going to bed and you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep, people would tell you that that's great sleep hygiene. But if you're waking up the next day more tired than when you went to bed, there's likely something going on with your sleep. If you've got that many hours of sleep, and you, you don't wake up feeling refreshed, then there's something going on. It could be medical, it could be stress, um, there could be a sleep problem that's kind of underlying that um, you know, lack of restorative sleep, but you need to kind of investigate that. And journaling is going to be something I say a lot today. If you can kind of journal or track the kind of basics we're talking about, and you know, really start to tune in and reflect on just your life and your well-being and where you are on this journey, that will really help increase the likelihood that you're gonna be successful and that you might reach your goals a little quicker. Um, so definitely start to notice the patterns. You know, you wanna be your own expert. And I feel like that health and wellness is kind of like your own little research lab. You're really studying yourself and your habits to see what works for you. Because what's healthy for me is not going to be healthy for you necessarily. Um, it's not a protocol that you can follow. It's not a set of rules that I can give you or a specific diet plan that I can recommend that's going to be the solution for you. There are going to be things that I mentioned that will be helpful to you, but you have to kind of determine what is healthy for you and what works best for you in your life and the season of life that you're in. So definitely focus on quality of sleep in addition to the quantity of sleep. You wanna to try to be in bed by 10 p.m. because if you're going to bed later than 10, you're really kind of out of tune with your circadian rhythm that you know has you kind of waking up and going to sleep at certain times. And so 10 p.m. to midnight is when your body is really designed to heal itself. So that's when your restorative sleep is taking place. So if you're going to sleep after midnight and, and for like my college students that I tell this to, you know, they're able to sleep in. So they might get seven to nine hours of sleep, but they're sleeping later in the day. Usually for us, if we're working, we're not getting the full seven to nine hours of sleep that we need for going to bed at midnight because usually we have to be at work sooner than that or we might be catching up on the weekend and that's not as helpful either. So you really wanna to try to go to bed, go to sleep by 10 p.m., which means that you really need to start powering down for the night 
um, around nine. So it may be that you want to set an alarm on your phone or your smartwatch, or you know, maybe you have an Echo Dot or something like that, a Google Home, that you can set a power down hour reminder for every night at 9 p.m. And that's what we do in our house. Our Alexa Echo Dot tells us, you know, it's power down hour. And that's a signal to, you know, cut the lights off, make sure the door is locked, make sure the house is armed, you know, make sure I've brushed my teeth and flossed and, you know, put your pajamas on and, you know, make sure the animals and kids are okay. And then it's time for me to go to bed. Um, and that process is going to look different for everyone. I like to share examples because I feel like that is the most helpful for you to decide like, oh, okay, that's when that person does this. Um, you know, we learn best when we share those kind of things and we're not really in kind of a position to really have those kind of casual conversations right now. So hopefully the examples will help today. Um, having that evening routine or that power down hour is really going to be helpful in setting you up for success. Um, for those of you who are familiar with children, you know that we give children a routine. We, you know, bathe them, we use the, you know, same shampoo, the same lotion, we read them a story, we cut the lights down low, we give them pajamas, they may get a bath before bed. We do this whole elaborate routine when children are babies and really young. And then as we get older, we somehow think we've outgrown the need for that routine. And so if we can start putting a routine in place for ourselves, I think you'll really see and notice a difference in our sleep. And so definitely once you're at the 9 p.m. hour, you don't want to have any blue light exposure. So even if, you know, you have to kind of train yourself or wean yourself off of social media and devices, you know, wear some blue light blocking glasses. You can get a really good pair on Amazon for just a few dollars. Um, you can put apps on your phone, you can not watch your TV, or you could use the blue light blocking glasses. Hopefully you're not taking your laptop to bed, but if you are, you know, start kind of, you know, breaking up with devices um, in the bedroom. And if you are using them, definitely set, you know, timers and use the glasses to really, you know, prevent you from getting that blue light exposure. Your eyes are going to be so helpful um, not only in protecting your, your vision, but you want to make sure that you're getting the exposure to your eyes that you need to cue your circadian rhythm. So the blue light, you know, really interferes with that process. It interferes with our hormones. And so that's why it's so important. Um, but it's also important when you get up the next day, so many of us keep the blinds closed and curtains drawn. You really want to make sure that when you get up within the first 15 or 30 minutes of waking up, you're getting some sunlight and that you're getting out in the sun, even if it's cold, because your eyes are going to be that cue that, oh, it's okay, it's time for me to wake up. But so often we get up in a darker house. We don't really go outside and get that exposure. We ride in a car which has tinted windows and we usually use, you know, sunglasses or at least I do even in the winter. And then we walk into a building that has artificial light and then we stay in that until it's dark and we get home and it, we use, you know, lamps and it's dark in our homes. And so our eyes aren't getting the light exposure that it needs to be able to understand, okay, it's time for me to be awake. It's time for me to wind down and go to bed. And so on along that same line, when it's time to go to sleep, you want to make sure that your room is cool, dark, and quiet. So you might want to use a noisemaker. You might want to uh, make sure you have, you know, room darkening shades. You might want to cut out the lamps and the uh, night lights because that can really impact your vision, your actual reading vision. If you use uh, night lights, research has shown that that does impact your reading acuity. Um, because our eyes are really designed to have no, no light coming in. Um, if it's a fall hazard, maybe you have young kids or maybe you have, you know, someone in your home that's at risk for a fall and you need to use lamps and night lights, which we do in my home, you can use like a, you know, kind of a, a lesser bright bulb or you can use a sleep mask. There's lots of things that you can do. Um, to make that a little bit easier and safer for everyone in the home. But those are some tips to think about in terms of sleep. 
there's certainly much more that we could do. We could, we have an entire program on sleep more, stress less. So there's definitely more that we could go into sleep, but I really like for you to start with these little baby steps toward health and wellness, because otherwise, if you try to make all of these changes that I recommend, or you try to go out and buy all of these products and things, it's just like when you try to go and get a gym membership in January and by mid-February, you know, you're no longer going to the gym. You want to build in the habits of doing these things first and then invest your time and your money. So um, definitely think about some of these options. You know, most of them are really affordable and just try one or two things to start. So a sleep mask, you know, it's kind of fun to have those messages on there. Do not disturb. Um, you can have a weighted blanket. Uh, this picture over here on the left corner is Epsom salt. So taking an Epsom salts bath before bed, it has some good magnesium in it. And that can be really relaxing to your body, to your muscles. A lot of us are depleted of our magnesium. So that's a good way to get that. Um, certainly you only use about, you know, one cup of the Epsom salts typically. Um, in bath water. So it's really diluted. Um, but if you have any medical concerns, be sure to, you know, make sure that you're aware of those. Um, this little gadget in the bottom corner, kind of in the middle, is a, a hatch device. And this is just one example of many where you actually can have it simulate a sunrise in the morning. So if you are one of those people that don't get a lot of natural sunlight in the morning, this is a hatch um, device that actually can wake you up with light instead of sound, which is really helpful for a lot of people because a, an alarm clock going off in the morning can be really jarring. I mean, it jars me awake in the morning, but I'm someone who has to use an alarm because I have to be on time. So I want to make sure that I am, you know, kind of ahead of the game, <laughs> that I'm not sleeping in. And so um, that would be really stressful for me not to use an alarm. For some people, using an alarm is stressful. And this is a good kind of midway compromise on that. So you can use it um, for, you know, relaxing sounds. It actually has, you know, nature sounds and kind of white noise. Um, and then I also put a bottle of essential oils on here. So there are several studies done through the NIH um, here in the U.S. that show that lavender essential oil can be really helpful for people who have sleep disruption. Um, the caveat here is that, you know, you want to use it externally and you want to make sure that if you use essential oils that you're using some that are medical grade and that they've not been adulterated or altered with chemicals um, or diluted in any way. So you definitely want to be careful. You don't want to get this, you know, at your local um, bedding store or you know, your local big box store. You want to make sure that you're getting a good quality essential oil and that you're using them appropriately. But lavender can be really relaxing. Some people like to make sprays and spray it on your pillows or you might want to get a diffuser and diffuse it. Um, definitely, you know, make sure that you're avoiding, you know, the kind of scents and candles and things like that. That does not give you the same benefit because those are more fragrances than they are essential oils. But those are some practical tools for sleep. So with hydration, you want to make sure that you know how much water you need a day. So the rule of thumb has been for so long, eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day. So 64 ounces. And we know through research that drinking about half of your body weight in ounces per day is really more of the gold standard now. So the caveat is that you don't want to go more than 100 ounces and definitely usually no more than 128 ounces of water because you can develop water toxicity. So the best thing to do is to track the water that you're drinking on a day-to-day -day basis. Track your activity and then track how you feel in response to that. So obviously this can vary, but on a day like today, I need less water than I did on a day like yesterday. So yesterday I had students in hospital clinical. I was wearing a mask for most of the day. And I had a quick lunch break and then I had to teach for two hours. Uh, yesterday. And so most of my day was spent kind of on my feet in a mask. Um, even without the mask, that is you know, using up more of my energy. And 
I'm having more respirations because I'm talking more and I'm up and moving more. So on a day like yesterday, I need more water. Today, I've just had to wear my mask into my office. And so I'm not, you know, doing a lot of teaching or talking or standing today. I'm doing a lot of desk work. So I have my water sitting here beside me. That's just a habit that I have gotten into, but I'm not having to drink as much to stay hydrated. And so you want to make sure that you know that all of this is fluid. So there are no rules of, you know, drink this, eat that, do this thing, and you're going to be healthy. If you get nothing else out of this presentation, I want you to get encouragement and I want you to get that kind of principle down. <laughs> you know, there is no protocol and I'm a nurse. I love protocols, but there is no protocol for health and wellness. It is going to vary every day and it's going to vary among every, everybody. I see a question, so I'm going to check really quick. Okay, so it's asking, um, the question's asking, do we need to limit it to, you know, 100 ounces or 120 of fluid um, if you're drinking more than just water? So that's a good question. So I'm really specifically speaking about just water. You know, you do want to stay hydrated. Um, tea can really be um, dehydrating because it's a diuretic. So whether you're drinking, um, you know, hot tea or sweet tea or unsweetened tea, um, tea and coffee are diuretics typically and can really kind of counterbalance what you're doing with your water. And I say that as someone who drinks tea and coffee. <laughs> so you probably need to drink a little bit more water if you are drinking those things. Um, but there is no hard and fast recommendation when you think about the maximum amount of intake for fluids a day. There is no hard and fast um, kind of rule for that overall. We just want to make sure that you're not overdoing it on the water because some people think a little bit of water is good, so then a lot of water is great, but you can get that water toxicity, and so that's why we're really saying the recommendation would be no more than 100 to 128 ounces. I hope that makes sense. If not, just definitely um, ask for clarification, and I'll be happy to answer. So tracking your progress is really helpful and keeping up with how much you drink. You know, ideally we're talking about only drinking water, which definitely, I definitely love a coffee. <laughs> um, I, I usually have at least one a day. So I'm, I know that that's ideal, but you want to keep up with all of it. So keep up with how much coffee you're drinking, keep up with how much water you're drinking. And if you're drinking Cokes or sodas or things and teas, um, just keep up with those so you kind of can track how you feel and how much fluid intake you're getting in overall. Um, you know, I am of the belief that uh, soft drinks in moderation um, with meals is better than, you know, having diet soft drinks because of the extra chemicals and aspartame. Um, a physician that I worked with, you know, kind of confirmed that for me and said, for me at least, for me personally, that it's better for me to drink, um, you know, a Coke with lunch than it is to drink, you know, diet Coke freely um, because of the chemicals. And when you're having that much sugar intake from soft drinks, um, that definitely can really impact your insulin levels and, and can bottom out your insulin if you're sensitive to that. So having that soft drink um, with a meal is, is more helpful. The same thing with, you know, sugars and sweets and snacks and, and carbs and donuts and things. If you can eat them when you've, you know, recently had lunch or dinner or something like that, eating your dessert or your sweet snack with a meal is going to help you um, kind of level out your blood sugar better than if you just eat that candy bar or something on its own, especially if you're eating it with like a soft drink or something that has a lot of sugar in it. Um, so tracking your progress can really be helpful in that sense because you can start to see the patterns that you have and carrying your water bottle around with you now that we're kind of back on campus is really important too because it's just a good habit. It's a reminder, a physical reminder that you need to fill it up and drink out of it. If you don't love water, carbonated water is really good. Just make sure it doesn't have a lot of extra additives in it because sometimes they will put sugar in it. Um, typically I say, unless you just love water, if the water is really good and it's from a can, it probably has something in it that's not as healthy for you because um, typically, you know, that's going to have sugars and things because most of those drinks are going to be, um, they're sweet, they're going to have some sugar 
or some chemicals. So try to add fresh fruits or herbs to the water or to the carbonated water to make it fun. I really like strawberry, lime, and mint, um, but you can do any kind of combination of those um, that works good for you. Also, kind of eating fruits and vegetables uh, is really helpful. So you can infuse the fruits and vegetables into your water, but even eating fruits and vegetables as a snack is really helpful. Things like watermelons, melons, cucumbers, um, those all have really high water intakes. And so you can actually do a Google search and see like which, which fruits and vegetables have higher water contents and see which ones you like. Um, because I don't think it's realistic to think that you're going to want to eat every fruit and vegetable that has high water intake so, um, or high water count. So just make sure that you're picking some that you enjoy that you don't mind eating that has a good percentage of water. And one of my favorite water bottles, other than the fact that it's plastic, I really love that it has the demarcations of time and the little motivational messages. So, you know, eight o'clock, get started. Um, you know, it goes by hour, nine o'clock, remember your goal. So it has a little motivation there and then it reminds you to refill it and say around two o'clock, two to three is when we start to have an energy drop because our cortisol levels naturally drop about four times a day. So, um, you know, you have a change at least four times a day. In the morning around six or seven, your cortisol, kind of your stress hormone is at its highest. And then around lunchtime, 11 or 12 or one, um, it kind of starts to drop off a little bit. And then around three o'clock, it drops off again. And then around nine o'clock at night is when it drops off to its lowest point so that you can go to sleep. And so when you're kind of feeling hangry after lunch and you're feeling tired, like you might need a nap, which many of us might be feeling that right now because it's after lunch on Friday, um, then you kind of need a pick me up. So in an hour or two, when you get off this call, you're probably like, oh, I need a coffee or I need a water or I need a snack. Um, it's because your cortisol levels are starting to drop off and your energy levels are going to kind of drop off a little bit with that. So if you know that you're kind of prone to that, and I definitely am, then it's really helpful for you to have a, a built-in healthy snack for yourself. So set an alarm around, you know, 2.45 or 3 o'clock and go refill your water bottle, go get a healthy fruit or snack or protein or something that's going to kind of sustain you. Um, maybe some peanut butter if you're not allergic, something that's going to really give you some good protein and a good boost and, um, and start drinking some of your water because sometimes we think that we're hungry and we're really just thirsty. We're, we're pretty much chronically dehydrated in America. And so it's really important that we drink before we're thirsty because once we're really thirsty, we're probably already dehydrated. Another um, kind of product that I like, I have no affiliation with any of these products. I'm just sharing things that have worked with me. Um, so, you know, liquid IV, it's a, a kind of a hydration packet or hydration multiplier is what they call it. Um, you know, there are tons of options out there. Avacure has one. Um, if you, are, you know, are familiar with Beachbody, they have Bevy. There are just so many different products out there. Um, and even if you just go to, you know, Target or Walmart or Publix, you can find, you know, a similar product to this. Um, this one actually claims that one packet is like drinking three bottles of water. I have not looked at the research, but it does have more of kind of your electrolytes and um, kind of performance enhancers to help sustain you, to help get the water where it needs to go. And so um, it's been really popular among people who train, who, you know, do a lot of exercise, uh, who have shift work like nurses. It's been pretty popular and it's widely available. And um, so I think that kind of adds to it. And it's, it's a pretty economical purchase. Um, if you go to Costco, you can get a huge bag of 30 for um, not much money. If you go to Target and get it, it's going to be really pricey. Um, Walmart has all of their products, but I just encourage you to find something like this if water is hard for you to get in and you don't want to go through the time and expense of, you know, kind of infusing your own water. Uh, an app, I'm a huge fan of tracking things. So you might be digital or you might be, you know, a paper tracker, but this is an app called Hydro Coach. There are a ton of apps out there that are free. 
but I think this is a really good way to track what you're, you know, drinking every day. And you always have your phone, so that's another good benefit of having an app. Um, but if you're a paper person, and I tend to be more of a paper person, I like this water challenge. So you could print this out every month and you can keep track of your water. And, you know, this, of course, all trackers pretty much have it based on the eight eight ounce glasses, but you could make each drop be a different ounce, you know, so if you didn't want to, if you were trying to do 100 ounces, you know, you could divide that up um, and mark those off accordingly. So this is just another good tool that you can use that may be helpful to you to keep track and to inspire you to continue. So nourishment is so important that we eat for um, you know, our bodies to be nourished, not for our bodies to be a certain size. And so we definitely wanna make sure that we're eating a balanced meal and avoiding inflammatory foods. So dairy, gluten, soy, a lot of nuts, um, lectins, there's so many things that can be inflammatory. And at the end, I have right here, you know, kind of to know your food sensitivities and intolerances. And that's so important. That's why I say that nothing is healthy for everyone. <laughs> so, you know, broccoli might be really helpful for you, you know, it, and we say that broccoli is healthy, right? And we say that pizza is unhealthy. But broccoli isn't healthy for everyone. It's not a, the best choice for everyone. There are certain people who have GI issues like um, gastritis or diverticulosis that they can't really eat cruciferous vegetables like broccoli. So that's not a healthy option for them. But if you were to ask someone which is healthy and which is unhealthy, they would tell you that pizza is unhealthy and broccoli is healthy. And I really want to change the narrative or at least challenge the narrative that that's true because it's not true for everybody every time. So definitely important that we stop kind of moralizing our food and our diet and just our life choices in that way and start to really see um, that each of us is individual and that we are very unique in our ability to, you know, tolerate certain foods and certain exercise programs, and we just have to choose what works best for us. Um, I also want to encourage you to eat the rainbow. So you want to aim for a colorful plate. You know, we often eat beige and brown food <laughs> without thinking about it. You know, we have meat that's usually beige or brown. We have potatoes and starches that we love, fries, all of that, you know, is kind of considered beige and brown food. And then when we want to feel healthy, we'll eat a lot of green, you know, we'll be like, okay, I'll eat that broccoli now. <laughs> I feel healthy. Um, but what's important is to really think about eating the full range of the rainbow. So having reds, oranges, yellows, greens, purples, um, you know, even blues like blueberry, which probably technically is purple. Um, we want to eat all of those ranges because each of those colors represents a different nutrient or antioxidant that you can't get in another color or food group. And so eating the rainbow is really the best way to make sure that you're not having to take a ton of supplements, but you're really getting nutrients from the food that you're eating. Um, that's very important. If you can choose organic, choose organic when you can. Kind of reference, you know, the um, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. If you Google those, that will give you a list of the 15 cleaner options that you can do, you know, just kind of traditional um, farming. You don't have to get organic. And then the Dirty Dozen is going to be um, the dozen or so uh, options that you really would prefer to choose organic if you can. Um, organic milk, organic eggs, and organic meats are always helpful because then that's going to limit the amount of chemicals and extra hormones that you're getting. And then when you think about putting a plate together, you want to try to think about plating your food and sitting down with it. Because if you're like me, you're on the go a lot and you eat a lot, you know, kind of in go mode. Even if you're sitting down, you're probably trying to quickly sit down. We don't often, you know, savor our food, unfortunately. Um, you might even be like me and eat in your car a couple of times a week because you're going from point A to point B. And, you know, that's okay. Sometimes we have to do that. I have to do that frequently. Um, but we don't want to do that on a regular basis. We want to sit, plate our food, um, you know, have that moment where we can savor it and really be mindful and intuitive about what we're eating. 
And when we do it, we want to make sure that we're having a protein, a complex carb, and a healthy fat at every meal and every snack, because that's going to really sustain our blood sugar. Um, you know, if our blood sugar isn't stable, it's going to be hard for us to see gains with muscle mass, with weight loss, or just health in general, because our body is going to be under stress from those stress hormones. And so when you think about having the protein, complex carb, and healthy fat, that's going to help stabilize your blood sugar for longer throughout the day. You're going to feel more full and you're not going to be as hungry. Um, you're going to be able to make it to the next meal without having to snack a lot. So that's something to consider. If you do have some anxiety, there of course are lots of different ways that anxiety can present and can be impactful for you. Um, but sometimes people have anxiety, you know, because they have blood sugar drops because they're dehydrated and because they're not eating meals that sustain their blood sugar. And anxiety is one way that our body gets our attention to ask us to take care of ourselves. And so certainly, you know, anxiety has a mental health component and, and there is that, you know, entire presentation. But I'm talking about the anxiety that you get when you're feeling really hangry and hungry and tired. Um, that can really be a clue that, you know, your body's trying to get your attention to, to make some changes there. So definitely track your meals and your snacks, you know, use a food journal or an app. Um, of course, there's tons of options out there. My Fitness Pal being one of the most popular. Um, definitely, you know, check out ones that work best for you or use a paper tracker. It doesn't have to be expensive or fancy to be effective for health and wellness. So, um, and then if you think that you might have food intolerances or sensitivities, you certainly can see an allergist or you can even, sorry, my lights just went off, or you can um, actually order some tests online for you to be able to test at home. And so, let me see if I can get my light back on. <laughs> um, some practical tools for nourishment. You can use this example for a healthy plate. So this gives you a good, you know, kind of visual of what a healthy plate could look like. So healthy protein and fat and carb. Um, you want to make sure that you're eating more vegetables than you're eating, you know, kind of meats and starches and carbs. Um, so veggies, you know, are going to be really important. We like to say water first and veggies most. And then certainly you want to make sure that if you have food sensitivities that you take care of those. Because if you continue to eat things that you don't tolerate well or that you're sensitive to, uh, like dairy or gluten, then you're going to really consider consider, you know, having those introduced all the time, that's going to introduce inflammation into your body. And that's going to be really difficult for you um, to kind of see some progress on your goals. I also included this image here on what a healthy eating plate looks like. This is based off of the my uh, plate kind of dot gov movement of, you know, replacing the food pyramid. But here it talks more about the specifics of what you need to do to achieve this healthy plate rather than just having the images. And then I love that they replaced the dairy with water because for the most part, people don't really do well with dairy. And it can be very, um, you know, inflammatory to your body, even if, you know, you don't realize it, you can have a lot of inflammation from that. And there are other better sources of calcium for bone health. And so that's really the only reason we've been told to use milk and dairy products. Um, you know, it's for that bone health, but there's definitely other better sources of, of vitamins and minerals that can be helpful for your bones. And so if you think that you might need some additional support, we have an amazing dietitian here at the university, Suzanne Henson, and she's over at the University Medical Center. So you can call this number here. I've listed it for you. It's 348-1255, and you can get a nutritional consult with her. It's part of your benefits as a UA employee, and it may be that you have to pay a copay but it is part of your benefits. And so you can give a call and get more information about that. I have personally done it and felt that it was very, very helpful. So you also want to move. And I'm going to move right now and see if I can get my lights back on. Perfect. I've done about 30 webinars and I've never had the lights uh, go off. So I guess I must have been super still today. <laughs> 
So you want to move your body every day. So I love yoga and water exercises, water aerobics, swimming. Those combined, of course, with walking are going to be the most helpful and lower impact exercises, especially if you're a beginner. So I want to encourage you to find something that works for you. But I also want to say, if you just park a little further away from your building, or if you take a spin around the neighborhood after dinner, or you dance while something is cooking on the stove, or you start doing stretches in the morning or at night, that is amazing progress if you've not been doing any of those things before. So we think that we have to do CrossFit and high intensity interval training or HIIT workouts. And we think that we you know, need to do so many, you know, kind of rigorous exercise programs to be healthy. And for the most part, if you just start with simple movement every day, strive for five minutes, for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, until you work up to 30 minutes of moderate exercise, um, that is going to be so helpful for your body. And you're going to start to see, you know, progress towards your goals without the wear and tear and possible injuries that you'll see if you try to just dive in and go from, you know, zero to 60 with your exercise, that's going to be very frustrating to you if you don't see immediate gains or losses depending on your goals and you have an injury or an accident because you're trying to do strenuous exercise when you haven't been doing that before. So take it easy and start with something that is fun for you. If you don't like water and you start trying to drink 100 ounces of water a day, you're probably not going to stick to that. If you don't like exercising and you start going to a CrossFit gym and exercising six days a week, it's probably not going to be sustainable. And then when you try to make changes in the future, you're going to kind of tell yourself if you're like most people, oh, well, I've not been successful before, so why should I try now? So start off small, do small wins all along the way and build up your confidence in your abilities and in yourself so that you kind of continue on this success. <laughs> we want you to feel good while you're doing these things. So some practical tools for movement. Um, there's an app called Yoga Down Dog. It's been free during COVID. Um, they wanted to ensure that anyone could have access to workouts while gyms were closed. Yoga with Adrienne is a YouTube channel where you can do free workout programs and she has workout programs for beginners. I personally love her yoga platform because I think it's very inclusive of all um, abilities and uh, people from different backgrounds. So she does a really good job of introducing you to yoga in a way that feels really good. Um, of course, with our Couch to 5K program, there's going to be some training that you can sign up for here at the university. But if you'd like a free app or an app program that would help keep you on track with that, there's a coach or Couch to 5K uh, app that you can use. There's also this uh, paper habit tracker that I personally use. You can just do a Google search and you can find this one for free online and it's one that you can track your you know exercises your supplements you just write them down um kind of in each of the rows and then the columns you can check off each of the days that you've done those things and that is a really good visual reminder for me and then of course uh, you can use your ua benefit to get your fitbit tracker uh, you have a discount code with that as a UA employee, and that would really help you stay in touch with our Move Spring app challenges. So um, those are some things that I think would really help encourage you and start your kind of movement practice. And then meditation. This is the one that people usually don't tend to think about doing, but our brains need to rest. And I always tell people that meditation is for the mind what sleep is for the body. So if you are waking up and hitting your alarm clock or hitting snooze and you're going throughout your day, you get up, you get ready, you rush out the door probably, you go through your day pretty rushed, you eat at your desk or you eat in your car and then you're kind of leaving campus, you know, in the afternoon, the evening and going home to kind of rush and do your nighttime routine. 
and you're probably staying go, 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 and on, on, on until you go to sleep. And then you shut everything down and then you expect to fall asleep within a few minutes. And you may actually fall asleep. You may be so exhausted that you don't see a, a delay in sleep because of that. But that's not how our bodies are designed to, to approach life. Our bodies are designed for rest throughout the day. So you want to let your brain and your body rest. So start with five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, and five minutes in the evening and work your way up until you're taking, you know, maybe 10 minute or 15 minute breaks three times a day. And for part of that time, try using meditation as a way to really calm yourself and relax. So that might mean that you listen to music if meditation seems too out there for you. Um, try using a meditation app, which I'm going to give you some um, good ones that I enjoy. Or you can just sit quietly for a few minutes. When we think about meditation, we often think about, you know, wearing, you know, exercise or yoga gear and, you know, sitting on the floor for 45 minutes meditating. And that's amazing. And that works for some people and that fits their lifestyle and their needs. For me, if that was the only way I could meditate, I would never meditate because I don't have that kind of time. And I'm not wired for that much, you know, for that much sitting, honestly. So I started with three to five minutes of meditation using an app in my car before I went into work. And um, I would close my eyes. I'd park at the back of the lot. I would, you know, shut the radio off. I'd turn the app on. And for three to five minutes, I would meditate before going into work. And ideally, I would do that when I get home, you know, a transition from work to home and home to work. Um, but it's a little easier for me to do it in the morning. And so that's a way for me to kind of just get my day started off well and with taking a minute to relax instead of just shutting off the car and going inside quickly. Um, journaling for self-reflection is su super important. Uh, using mindful breathing techniques. There's lots of videos online that you can search called boxed breathing and that can really help you there's also a lot of apps as well sometimes when we are talking fast like i'm doing today or um you know we are getting kind of anxious or just you know dealing with some things our breath can get out of sync and so we can actually start to have anxiety because our breathing isn't um kind of what it should be we take really you know quick, shallow breaths, and we're not getting that full breath that we need to get good oxygenation and relax, and that can cause us to have anxiety. So we want to be intentional with that and with our social media and entertainment and gaming. So many times we use social media and our phones to check out to, you know, relax, and that can actually make us more anxious. So we really just want to focus on being present in the moment. And these are some of the apps that I enjoy. My Life is one of my favorites, um, but Calm and Headspace are also really good. And then I just put a picture here of a radio because I think music is, you know, really underutilized <laughs> in our world today for this kind of thing. Um, you know, our heartbeats pick up the rhythm of the music. So if we're always, you know, on the rock and roll station, we're not really relaxing that much. Um, so if we can take some time to listen to some calming music, instrumental or just kind of mellow music. If you're on Spotify, Neo Mellow is kind of a good one. Um, that's a genre within Spotify, <laughs> not one that I think other people recognize, but uh, Totally Stress Free is one of those playlists and it's very calming and relaxing if you like this sort of music, um, but you might just wanna take time to make, create a playlist of your own that's really calming for you. And then I put just a simple notebook and pen on this uh, image for y'all because so many times I think journaling feels inaccessible that we really think that journaling has to be a fancy journal and a calligraphy pen because when you Google journals um, or you Google journaling, that's what you see. You see a fancy calligraphy pen and a fancy journal. And all you really need to do to journal is to take some dedicated time to sit down and write down your thoughts. It could be on a sticky note, a scrap sheet of paper, uh, you know, a really, you know, kind of inexpensive notebook and pen like this, 
or the notes app on your phone. But just checking in and reflecting on your goals and where you are and that sort of thing, kind of tracking the basics that we've talked about today, those can be so important to you and it doesn't have to be fancy or expensive. I thought I saw that question, but I don't think I did. All right, I think it was just reminding me of the previous. So mindset can be really you know, powerful for you. Positive reframing is, is so important. And so this is a coaching model that, you know, it can be helpful in retraining your thoughts if you have negative thoughts or unhelpful thoughts that pop up. So a lot of us are dealing with different things that, you know, we might have been dealing with before COVID and COVID just amplified it, or we might be having additional challenges that COVID brought forth. And so um, some of the times it's just not helpful to say we should just be positive, right? That's not how our brains work. So if we think about listing out or journaling um, this coaching model, which is circumstances, thoughts, feelings, actions, and results, then what we have is our circumstance might be I'm trying to work in the middle of a pandemic, or I'm trying to go to graduate school in the middle of a pandemic, or I'm trying to parent in the middle of a pandemic, whatever your fill in the blank is. Your thought about that is probably, this is so hard, or my life is so hard, or this is stressful. And when we think that thought, that thought is what drives the feeling and the action and then the result, not the circumstance. And so if we have the thought that my life is so hard, we start to feel overwhelmed and stress and fatigue, right? And when we feel those things, when we feel overwhelmed, we, we feel stuck. We don't do anything, right? And we're having kind of that freeze response, the, the kind of flight or fight or freeze response that we have to stress. And so we freeze and we don't do anything. So the result then is that life is stressful because we're kind of stuck in this negative habit loop. And so if we retrain our thoughts, to say, you know what, I'm strong, I'm capable, I can change things if I want, you know, really an empowering statement like that, then we can start to change the thoughts and the belief that we have about the situation or circumstance. So you want to notice that the circumstance doesn't change. So whatever you said, I'm trying to blank in the middle of a pandemic, work, parent, attend school, whatever it is for you, and you change the thought to be, I'm strong and I can change things if I want, you start to feel hopeful and more optimistic. You start to, you know, take action. You actually get started on whatever it is that you need to do to get unstuck and things start to change. And what I want to say about this is that, you know, people ask me all the time, how do you stay motivated? How do I stay personally motivated? And then they're asking how they can get motivated. And you don't want to build your health and wellness journey on motivation because motivation is is going to fade and probably fade quickly. Um, the way that you get motivated is, is you just take action and you develop habits that develop the discipline that you need to wake up and do the routine every day, to do the exercise, to do the reflection, to take the supplements, to eat the healthy food. So taking action is what gets you unstuck. And a lot of times we freeze and we think about what will get us unstuck when just doing the next right thing is what we really need. And so I hope this will be helpful to you because telling someone to just be more positive is not helpful and it doesn't work. But if you tell them to journal this out, eventually, if you journal out all of these circumstances and your feelings about them, you'll start to retrain your brain. You might still wake up tomorrow and think, oh, this is so hard, but then you're going to automatically at some point start saying, you know what, it is hard, but I'm strong and I can change this if I want. And that's the goal, not to eliminate the negative, you know, the negative thought, but to actually um, kind of self-coach and move beyond it. So I have a good friend, Summer, who is my health and wellness coach. Um, if you actually are a health and life coach, you usually have a health and life coach to help you on your journey. And she says that consistency plus time plus intensity times your belief in yourself equals your results. And I would say, I changed it for the yellow part to say that consistency plus time plus discipline plus knowledge and tools like I've given you today times your belief in yourself will actually equal your results um, because you do have to have that discipline and that knowledge and the tools that you need, the support that you need to be able to reach your, your results. And those are going to be whatever you determine them to be. 
So just a reminder that finding balance looks different for everyone. Uh, all of these rocks are in, you know, in balance, but they're all different. They're all different shapes and sizes and um, there's so much that's different about them, but they all achieve balance by doing what works for them. So just a, a visual reminder that we all just need to do what works well for us. So take what resonates and, um, and leave the rest. So we would love for you to follow us on social media. Ashley is on the call and she does a ph phenomenal job of managing our social media for us. And we also have some blogs that relate to the classes that we teach. So um, please give us a follow on these channels. And if you're interested in being coached by me uh, for health or life goals, you're welcome to reach out. My email is here, abby.horton at ua.edu and I'll be happy to give you some more information. It's free as part of your benefits as a UA employee. All right, so I will be happy to take questions now. I'm gonna go ahead and actually stop the share and pull